I'm not going to tell you about my world. That would be quite dreary. But I will tell you about my dreams. And the world, perhaps, that I would like to see, which doesn't quite exist. Because I believe something quite strongly. I believe in the transformative powers of theater and the arts. And I believe that theater and the arts have to be an integral part of our lives. They are as important and they should be valued as much as unpolluted air, clean water, good roads, electricity, medical facilities, good education systems, a healthy life in an urban situation, and the arts should have a place in them. But unfortunately, that is not our world today. But that's the world I dream of. I'm really, really lucky because I have my grandparents from both sides, my mother's side and my father's side, who were both actor managers. And they traveled with their passion and their love for theater across this magnificent country of ours. And therefore, it's actually incredibly difficult for me to articulate what it is that I really see as the value of theater. It's something that I just grew up with as something utterly normal. But it's something that I struggle to articulate because it's necessary. I have to be able to say why. Um, Otherwise, it just seems like a ludicrous, harebrained idea or something sort of slightly fluffy and fancy. And yes, all right, we'll deal with that once we get our real infrastructure in place. But I think it's as important as these great big highways or these enormously ghastly malls we're developing every day. We need infrastructure for the arts and for theater. I think there's something indescribable about what happens to all of you as you sit there in the darkness and you watch an incredible piece of theater on stage, and you get moved, or something tickles your brain and lingers with you for days and days. And this communal engagement, this experience of you doing this together, is incredibly important. It's incredibly important that it's live, that I'm actually a live physical human being standing in front of you, and we're engaging with each other and they were actually communicating with each other. If you were all to get up and walk away, that would affect what I would do on stage here, or what I would feel, or what I would experience, or what I would have to express. And it is that intangible commune that is so critical. And somewhere it touches the humanness in us. And I think that is essential, and that is so important especially today in urban India where we have we're rapidly moving towards a greater urbanization of our country with migration happening constantly with people being pulled out from where they belong and living in completely alien surroundings away from their families and roots and we are not contemplating or thinking about how to allow them to have a healthy life yeah we build malls for them but that's not enough. And therefore, I believe it is this infrastructure and this development of spaces and platforms to pull the arts and the audiences together across our country that are most urgently required. There are three enormous inspirations for me that I have found out about in the last few years. Um, and like, strangely enough, they all happen in the southern hemisphere of the world. It's strange what happens to that part of the world. Um, one is in South Africa, in Cape Town, there's a little school called the Zip Zap Circus. And it's a school started about 20 years ago by this couple who were performers in a circus, acrobats and uh, jugglers. And they decided, he decided to go back home and back to Cape Town. And he went into the roughest part of Cape Town, the part where kids on the age of eight or nine are sniffing glue, turning to drugs and crime. and the hopelessness of this neighborhood was just unbelievable. And it is right here where they came up and they came and set up Zip Zap Circus. And it was a school after school hours, kids would come in and learn the fantastic trade of circus arts. And I've been there and it was absolutely spine chilling. I walked in and um, 
Brent, the man who's, who's going to show me around, picked up his three-year-old daughter and uh, put her on top of a pole and put the pole, huge six-foot pole, on his head and walked down like this. This is just like being in India, where you have these most incredible acrobats on, on traffic light corners, a dying art in our country. I feel very, very strongly for the circus. I feel it's, it's, it's really, really sad what we're doing with the circus in our country, letting it get completely devalued and vanished from our lives. But here, they were bringing such dignity into the lives of these children. These children today, the circus is now 20 years old. They perform all over the world. They are the most coveted uh, performers that are lapped up by Cirque du Soleil and taken even further all across the world. And they do incredibly well. And they are amazing, amazing performers. Just one man and his dream. Another wonderful, inspiring story is a story from Venezuela, which you may know of, which is called, um, the, the, the whole system is called uh, El Sistema. Again, one marvelous man who believed in the power of classical, not only classical, but he was from classical music. And he believed he could go into the shanty towns and into the, the, the you know, the Dharavis of Venezuela, and he could teach the children music. And I think he, the first time he went in, he, he got somebody to donate him 20 violins and 20 violin stands, and he went in and taught them. And this, again, is a 35-year-old program that was then uh, supported by the government and has been going on for constantly. And more and more teachers, more and more trainers have come in. They've been celebrating and creating the most incredible music and musicians. This has not only impacted each and every child, but it has impacted the entire society because their families suddenly now feel a sense of dignity. They know who they are. They know their worth. Otherwise, they were the scum of the earth. And now today, they have a sense of who they are because their children can play this magical music. And today, of course, their children are also, yet again, the most coveted, not only musicians, but um, you know, I mean, technicians and music and 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 uh, or for, for orchestras all over the world. Um, the other, the third great inspiration for me is again from South America. It's from Brazil. Um, 65 years ago, and here again, it's interesting to look how the corporates look to the world and how they forget these really important things. When the Second World War happened, it's an interesting reason. It's sort of not quite. But it, it does touch upon what I'm concerned about in India. Second World War, enormous amount of European migrants moved to Brazil to set up business, industry, uh, with a huge workforce. They have to create a life afresh in this completely alien land. What do they do? They decide to take assess of the salary of each and every worker and set up community centers that would deal with sports and arts. And these are called sesque. S-E-S-C. These projects still exist today and they are now mandatory by law for any business above a certain amount of income. But they are state of the art. They are of the highest caliber. You have the Ariane Rushkins, the Cirque du Soleil, I mean the greatest, greatest performers of the world, whether they're musicians, artists, art exhibitions, uh, dancers, they go to Brazil and they tour across these centers. Sao Paulo, for instance, which is only the district of Sao Paulo, which is only slightly bigger than Bombay, it has uh, 30 million people, has 33 centers like this, in variant, variant size and shape, but still places where people can go in your neighborhood. It's accessible. You are an old man, you just go and sit in the library and have a coffee. You're a child and your mother wants to go and see a show, you have a, a creche for a child to be in while your mother walks through the art gallery or watches a show. They're just amazing spaces. You need spaces like this in our completely crazy, hectic lives to refresh your soul and just let down your hair and figure out who you are. But we don't have them. We have one Prithvi theater. That is my sadness that I go with today. A few years ago, I was reading through the instances or the management with a vision, and it could be done. 
It could be done so easily and not expensively. But we need reimaginings of the way we want to be, and we, want, we need ways of demanding that this is the world we want. I want a world where I have a son, I should be able to take him to the theater every weekend. I should be able to walk across and show him an art exhibition. I shouldn't have to trek miles and miles across town for the one-off show that I may be chance to get a ticket for, or maybe not. So this is the world that I dream of, and I think it is possible. And so with my new baby, Junoon, this organization that we've recently given birth to, we're making small little baby steps towards tiny little connects across the country to seed this dream and hope we can infect more and more people with it. Thank you. <laughs>